It's finally happened, ladies and gentlemen. Battery Day has been concluded. We got a lot of answers for questions we've been asking for years and also a lot of unanswered questions. So in today's video, I'm just kind of recapping everything best I can. For those who aren't going to watch the whole thing, there's basically three things to take away from Battery Day. For one, there's a new Plaid Model S with three motors, two in the back, one in the front. The range is over 520 miles. You can do zero to 60 in under two seconds, a quarter mile in less than nine seconds, and as a top speed of 200 miles per hour and it's coming at the end of 2021 you can order it on tesla's website today for hundred and forty thousand dollars so yes it's quite expensive it's up there but it's using tesla's next generation 4680 cells which they talked about for most of this event it is battery day so talking about how they're going to scale battery production increase energy density and lower the cost per kilowatt hour per battery on so many different metrics is how they're achieving insane range and insane performance like we're seeing in the Plaid Model S, but also it should help make Tesla vehicles ultimately more affordable. So in a way, this is kind of like that, again, promise of the original $35,000 Model 3, except this time they're saying that within the next three, maybe four years, they want to get their vehicles down to $25,000 using these next generation cells via a vehicle that currently has no name and no design. So they kept the cloth over it at the event, referring to it as small slash Robotech. So they are insisting that this will still be a fun car. It will still have autonomous driving features, but we'll start at $25,000. Those are the main things to take away from the whole event. But if you want some more of the nitty gritty details, well, I'll do my best to summarize everything they talked about that allows them to reduce the dollar per kilowatt hour by 56%. So that's right, a little bit over half thanks to five different changes within manufacturing to Tesla batteries. First goal they wanted to achieve was reaching a terawatt hour of battery battery production, which is just astronomically high, way more than they're producing right now. And this is partially thanks to the 46 millimeter cylindrical cell. So this is just like electric reported on. It's a soda can looking battery cell that has five times more energy in it, which should allow just on the cell level, a 16% boost in range and six times the overall power, which should allow for faster performance and acceleration as well. This is a tabless electrode, like so many people were anticipating, which does help with faster charging and thermal Thermals, the new official name for the cell. So on the Model 3 and the Y, we had the 2170 cells. This one is officially called the 4680 cell. So obviously much, much larger. And they are already building them. They showed footage of this cell under construction at the Cato Road facility, which is great to see. And within a year, this Cato Road prototype facility that is starting the first assembly line of the 4680 cells, they're hoping to hit 10 gigawatt hours a year within the next year. So scaling of that battery production plant, which is likely what batteries are going into the Plaid Model S and perhaps other vehicles in the future as well are coming straight from that facility just down the road. But they also want to mass produce these batteries at Giga Texas as well as Giga Berlin. So it sounds like the first time these cells will be built at scale will likely be when Giga Berlin goes online next year. And at Giga Texas, they're anticipating to do like 200 gigawatt hours a year. So much, much higher production rate. And of course, in time, they will be building more facilities, more factories that are able to build these batteries batteries at tremendous scale. They detailed a lot about what they learned from Maxwell Technologies, which they acquired last year, about the dry cell production and how that saves them so many steps on manufacturing. They get to skip over the ever so complicated, intricate process and insane amount of water that today's battery chemistry requires. They get to bypass all that with using the dry cell manufacturing, which is great. And they've also changed drastically the effect of motion and compared it a lot to the mass production of everyday items like bottles and how they want the battery cell assembly line to feel like a highway. There's not a lot of stops. There's not a lot of parts in the process where the cell isn't moving and they're adding to it and moving it all at the same time, not moving it, then stopping it and then adding to it, which again saves on the amount of square footage that is required to build these cells, which means that at the end of the day, you're able to produce much, much more batteries in a smaller footprint overall, which saves on cost. Their redesigns in the motion of the battery cells during production should result in an 86% reduction in the formation investment. And overall that results in a 75% reduction in investment per gigawatt hour, which means basically Tesla has to spend significantly less money to get the same amount of batteries. That's a whole 10 times smaller square footage per gigawatt hour produced. By 2022, Tesla is hoping to have 100 gigawatt hours of batteries produced within that year. And by 2030, they're hoping to comfortably 
comfortably exceed three terawatt hours. So that gives you a little bit of perspective on how many batteries they're hoping to produce over the next 10 years. And they're also relying a lot in this battery chemistry on the silicon anode, which is abundant. There's tons of it across the planet and it's very inexpensive. So they're using materials that are not hard to come by. And by using their own chemistry with Tesla's own custom silicon, they're able to have industry leading prices and through using this updated silicon, which they didn't want to give too much information on, but they're just saying it's much, much cheaper and easier to build than traditional silicon used in batteries today. That could result just in itself in a 20% range increase on the vehicles. They're also going to be using a lot more nickel in the cathodes of battery, which should save a lot of manufacturing because nickel is plentiful. It just requires a lot more people mining it. So it's all over the planet, but Tesla has said multiple times they're hoping more and more people can come forward and start mining nickel, of course, in an ethical way. And as they require more and more nickel in this battery chemistry, there will be no cobalt required at all, which is great. They also plan on using those iron phosphate batteries. We heard that China was using first on lower range vehicles. So cheaper vehicles that want to have a long cycle life as well as decent range, nothing game changing, but enough, you know, 250 to 300 miles that will be used in the upcoming $25,000 Tesla, as well as energy storage systems like the mega pack. And then for more high performance vehicles that go well over 300 miles and have more performance, those vehicles will use a nickel plus manganese mixture. So there's still a high concentration of nickel, but a little bit less iron, that's for sure. And then for high performance vehicles, like in the commercial or the high towing facility, like the tri-motor Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi, those will be using an incredibly high concentrate of nickel. And Tesla will be adding to their own facilities or building new ones to produce the cathode and for producing lithium. And they wanted to talk about a lot at this event, how plentiful lithium is. There's way more of it than there is oil on this planet. And they've acquired a property in Nevada with 10,000 acres that they have been granted permission to harvest lithium from the soil. And the amazing metric they brought up at the event is that there's enough lithium in Nevada alone that could produce enough batteries for the entire United States vehicle fleet. So that gives you a perspective on how much lithium there is to work off of. And they also plan on recycling old Tesla batteries and trying to harvest the best materials of each of them to put into next generation battery packs. So there's not a lot of battery recycling going on right now because Teslas are pretty new, but they did announce at this event that they are going to start recycling their own battery packs. And as Model 3s and Model S's and X's get older, there will be much more batteries to recycle and therefore more materials to deprive from those batteries and put into new generation batteries. So as much recycling as possible and the facility developing the Tesla cathodes and the Tesla lithium will be 100% powered by electricity. So no dirty power used at all along the way. The other big manufacturing difference that Elon was likely referring to when he was recently visiting Giga Berlin is the change in battery pack design. So there's no more modules. They're able to build the batteries, these new 4680 cells directly into the pack. And this pack is now structural to the car. So before the way most cars were built is you had the frame and the structure and then you would build the battery pack and add it. Whereas now, similar to an aircraft, the battery pack itself, which is very durable, very sturdy, and they emphasize that it's actually more structurally sound than most body frames because battery pack is more centered. The cells on the inside don't have modules to worry about so they can be even more so centered on the vehicle floor. That battery pack is now part of the structure of the overall vehicle, which saves a lot on manufacturing costs, improves safety, and allows them to increase the amount of energy density within each vehicle. The sheets that are holding the battery packs together are actually more stiff than most traditional car underbodies. So this is not a compromise on safety. It simply is just a better way of manufacturing the vehicle that allows for a safer ride, better energy density, and save on cost. And like I have on the screen here, all of these different changes to battery production they're planning on making results in a 56% reduction for each dollar per kilowatt hour, which is a massive savings. And these numbers aren't necessarily going to be reached right now. You know, they would love to do it instantly, as Elon said, but it's just not feasible. It's going to take time for these facilities to be built and scaled up. However, they hope that they can actually reflect these types of savings within the next three years. So it's not too distant, but absolutely not happening like tomorrow. And then they did a little bit of a Q&A, which was somewhat interesting. And they talked a little bit about vehicle to grid and how in North America, because of how households are set up and connected to the grid, it's simply not very doable or feasible. So vehicle to grid doesn't sound like it's a high priority for Tesla right now. A few of the questions I wish would have been asked, but we didn't really get much answers on is the degradation of these cells. I'm hoping because of the tabless electrode and how they're being built smarter, that this will result in very great degradation and you won't see very much range loss over time. And I'm sure 
sure that that's probably the case. They just didn't really bring it up very much. And we're not exactly sure if today's cells are the million mile battery, which had been rumored for so long. They could be, but they definitely didn't want to bring it up, which is a little concerning. And the other big question I saw a lot of people talk about is what's the design? What's the look difference with the Plaid Model S? So yeah, it was battery day, sadly. So they didn't give us much details on the updated design. It doesn't appear that anything is different on the website. It just seems like it has great specs, insane range, which is awesome. But when it comes to interior and exterior design, we didn't get much info overall. They also detailed at the annual shareholder meeting that they're hoping for that 4D autopilot rewrite to take place for private beta testers within the next month. But that date just keeps getting pushed back further and further and further. So I don't know if I want to believe that yet or not. But either way, that pretty much summarizes all of the most interesting stuff at Battery Day. If there were parts that I missed, please feel free to let me know. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.